Hi guys and welcome. I trust you've all had a very Merry Christmas and that your New Year has got off to a good start. Over the Christmas break, I had a bit of a play with the rotary axis I showed you in my last video. You'll remember I had taken this gearbox here and created a small rotary axis with it. Well, having had a bit of a play with it, I found a few issues. First was the backlash, which is one of the reasons I originally abandoned this originally. And the second one was how I attached the stock to this plate here. Simply screwing it in like so was fine when the motor was turning in this direction. But as soon as it started turning in this direction, there was the potential for it to start unscrewing. So this really wasn't an option. I looked at a original spur from a uh, wood lathe to see what it looked like and it has the point which you knock into your material like so and you've got these lugs here which also go into the material and lock it but again these are designed so that they are straight up and down on this side but this side curves up like this here it's the way they're machined the upshot is when you're turning this direction here it stays locked in place but when you go back the other way it actually pushes the material away from the spur here so again these are just made for wood lathes wood lathes only turn in one direction I had a go at making something of my own and came up with this little device here which is basically just a nut that I sharpen some V's into but again obviously this has the same problem uh, in, it's actually worse than the original than a, uh, a wood lathe spur gear because this one uh, will try and release no matter which direction you turn it this is what I finally came up with somewhat of a medieval, medieval looking device it started out as a coupling nut I drilled some holes around the edge here drilled a quarter inch hole on each flat and then with a hacksaw cut down and then filed and made a point. The advantage of this is you can take it, hammer it right in to the wood and it doesn't matter which way you turn it then, it will not release. The problem though of course is how do you align this with the centre of your material? Well, The answer is this, bolt here with a point on it. What I did is on the grinder I sharpen the bolt to a point and then you can wind it in here. You can now align the point, make a cross, align the point with it, wind your nut down like so and tap it in with a hammer. Back it off a bit more, tap it in further until this here is fully seated. Once it's in place here, the bolt can be removed and this here can be put onto the end of the rotary axis shaft. Now, of course, I abandoned this here, this unit here, and I made a new one. The new design is very simple in construction. My stepper motor as a timing poly a timing poly on the end of it here in this case this is about 19 teeth a belt another poly which from memory was about 32 teeth and uh, goes onto a shaft by some self-centering bearings and I threaded the end of it here and put a nut on it what I like about this design is there is no backlash because the timing belt and pulley stop that from happening. It's also easy to make, anybody can do it. This is a, these are half inch 
bearings I had left over from the original build of my CNC machine and with the use of a bolt giving you a thread end here you can put your pulley straight on the end of the other end of the bolt here in my case I turned mine down to eight millimeters rather than drill out the center of the pulley but I have a lathe so I can do that but if I didn't have a lathe I would have simply bored the center of the pulley out to half inch on the drill press and clamped it straight onto the shaft. So basically anybody can make this. I have got a couple of issues with it though, not with the design but these the gear ratio of these pulleys here really are not what I want. They're a bit too they're only giving me a 2.6 to 1 reduction. I want a little bit more. I've ordered some new pulleys. It's going to give me a 20 here, a 100 here, which will give me a 5 to 1, giving me a lot more power on the shaft here. But in actual fact, won't really reduce my speed by a hell of a lot. I'll still have plenty of speed available to me. It also... Uh, I didn't realize at the time, because I just picked these here out of my junk box, that this belt is not the right one for these pulleys. Uh, this is a metric belt, and these are imperial pulleys. So uh, they do not mesh very well, but they mesh well enough to uh, do some testing, and the testing is showing as very, very promising. I have ordered the belt and new pulleys to go on this here, and they're basically just direct replacements. They'll just slot straight into position, and I'll be away and laughing. They should be here sometime late January, early February. So it's just a matter of being patient. That's the problem with buying things from overseas. The current setup I've got does work though. So let's have a closer look at it and we'll see if we can't get it to cut something for us. Now I'm not gonna be doing anything fancy. I'm basically gonna take this square block of wood. It's just a piece of scrap wood I had here. I'm not even sure what type it is. I think it's a form of cedar and uh, I've squared it up on the table saw and I've marked centre on both ends here. So first of all that's where our bolt with the point comes in. So we simply place this in the centre there, give it a wee tap and I'm going to use this one here for the centre of the tailstock. This one here quite got in the right place just move it over we'll make a small tap here and then I'm going to take this wicked looking thing and just put my center back there where it belongs wind it down until it's just touching give it a tap back my bolt out a little bit and tap it down, keep backing the bolt out, until this piece is fully down into the wood. We can now screw this into our headstock. So you notice I've got a, a nut here on the headstock and that is to give me something to lock the end of the um, spur that I've made in. So now it just becomes a matter of grabbing a couple of spanners and locking them one against the other. I can now take my tail stock, and it's the same tail stock I had last time, and I can actually move this here a little bit to get it all lined up. And I can clamp the tail stock in place as we did before. Now as an added precaution, what I've done is I've mounted a block of wood here. And you probably can't see it, but there's a block of wood here as well. And they are to stop the X carriage moving too far and either crashing the cutter into either the tail stock or the head stock. Next I've chucked up a 12mm cutter here and I'm just going to move it across 
like so. And I'm going to call that x0. And I've taken the cutter down till it's just fractionally above this flat surface here. This block is 62 millimeters square, and I want to try and get as big a circle out of this as I can. So I'm just going to start by doing a roughing cut, which is going to take all these corners off and bring it down almost to this level. Then I'll change the cutter to a finer cutter and do a much finer cut across the surface to see if I can get a, a much smoother finish. Now that was a very nice uh, cut with the roughing bit, but it has left the surface very rough. So what I've done is I've now put in a 3mm bit, and I'm going to use that to do a finish machining pass on this here and to get it to the right size. You notice I've still got flat edges on it like this here, because I didn't have the cutter when I zeroed the cutter. Sorry, when I zeroed the cutter, I didn't take it right down to the surface. But the other thing I've done is I've put calipers onto this and I measured the diameter and I've come up with 63.4 millimeters. I'd like this to be 62 millimeters so if I actually set this to the surface of this material where it's been rounded say here and then once it's touching that surface I tell it it's 1.4 millimeters above the surface I'll actually get the exact size that I want for, the, for my finished diameter. The same process I use for doing my tabletop resurfacing and leveling profiles. In actual fact, the file I've made for this one is of a, uh, a profile that has a zero cut, of de a depth of cut, which is the way I like doing things. Well, that one didn't go quite as I'd planned. It wasn't as smooth as I'd hoped in actual fact. When I looked, I found I had a, a ball nose cutter instead of a flat one. So I'm going to put the flat one in and see how that goes. Well, I've measured the diameter of this here, and I'm within 0.2 of a millimeter of what I wanted. I'm 63.8, so that's pretty good. And I'm the same diameter at both ends, which means the tail stock and the head stock are both in alignment. Otherwise, I'd be turning a taper. But as you can see, I didn't quite get low enough. This this side here uh, it must have been slightly lower. So I'm just going to quickly reset the cutter and just recut that finishing pass again and that'll get rid of this here. Well, well that's taken it down to 61 millimeters and it's now got rid of the uh, flat spots on it and it's given me a reasonably nice finish too. Oops. Doesn't look too bad but now I can do with a bit of sanding so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly wind it up the speed. I'm just going to use my pendant here must admit that works surprisingly well uh, almost like a real wood lathe I think also my choice of wood here is is not uh, not the best it is quite quite coarse it's got a lot of tear out has occurred within the grain here but even so it still looks pretty good and like I said this is just a scrap wood it was an old pallet that I got uh, some John Deere equipment arrived on it and I managed to get hold of the pallet and some of the grains actually very nice it does remind me a bit of a cedar but uh, maybe uh, maybe somebody watching will be able to tell me actually what it is what they make John Deere pallets out of uh, but 
I think now we can look at machining our 3D model into here. I've now put in a 3mm ball nose cutter and I've loaded into Mac 3 my 3D model of the horse's head. It's now just a matter of doing the cut. One of the things I really like about the setup, if you want to have a good look at it, you just push the gantry out of the way. Well, that came out looking really good. It uh, really did a good job on this side of the grain here. And then it just sort of wrapped up the grain here at the end. Just sort of goes to show how the, how the wood grain and everything changes throughout a piece of wood. And depending on where you're cutting it, can make it look really good or not so good. And I imagine if I found the right spot, I could probably make it look really horrible. I've now changed to a 60 degree V-bit cutter and I've centered it along uh, this bare piece of wood here. And I'm gonna try V-carving into the surface of the material. So here's the finished result. You can see there the text IV card into it and the 3D model. Both of them came out pretty good. The new design I think is a lot better than the old one for a couple of reasons. It addresses the issues that I was having and it also means that the design is simple and anybody can make it. You don't require to have one of those gearboxes I had on my previous design. I have got the files for making that, the uh, headstock there, and once I've got the new gears and belt installed and all the rest of it, I'll release the lot. I'll do another video and just uh, put those files out there. At the moment, I'll just hold on to them until I've got something that I'm, I'm happy with. Uh, I should also spend a bit of time and rehash the tail stock. The tail stock I've made so far is uh, pretty rumpty, really. It does the job but I'm sure I can do better. I'm quite sure that quite a few of you will have noticed that the stepper motor was actually flapping about as the A-axis rotated. Now the reason for that is, as I mentioned earlier, the belt does not match the pulleys and the teeth of the belt are riding up onto the outside of the pulley uh, as it rotates and then it's dropping back into some teeth on the pulley so it's causing the thing to flap. Once I've got those new belts and pulleys, that problem will disappear. Having said that, I'm quite amazed at how accurately that thing is cutting with parts that are completely mismatched. Well, the rain's now started outside, and it looks like I've got to get the broom and sweep up the workshop after uh, spreading wood chips all over it. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.